Hello and welcome to Travel Story, the program that takes you by the hand and the heart all across a journey on Korea. I'm Jesse Day. Hi, I'm Sammy Jung. There is an old saying that traveling is the abridged version of life. As always, we're going to discover something new about Korea by traveling today. And let's meet our today's travel mentor. Please welcome Steve Miller. Hi, Steve. Greetings and salutations, my excellent friends. It's nice to see you today. We're awesome. happy to have you here. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am one of Korea's famous travel bloggers, so every day I share a little bit about my life on my website, as well as set off on some epic journeys across the nation every week. That awesome. is amazing. We're so happy to have such an experienced travel mentor amongst us. I'm That's sure he'll contribute greatly to the program. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we check out today's theme, and that is genuine freedom. That's right. Now, freedom means different things to different people. How could one define genuine freedom? Is it something that comes from within? Or is it something that comes from without? What do you think, Steve? I think you're on to something there, Jesse. I think a lot of it comes from within, how you perceive your life. If you look at history, there have been certainly oppressive errors. And um, you have people that look towards the future. They're filled with hope and they escape their conditions with their mind. But also, on a personal level, you have a certain amount of freedoms that allow you to go out and explore your environment. And so I think it's a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. Well, Steve, I know you're a huge traveler and you've traveled so many different parts of Korea. Do you often associate freedom with traveling? A lot of times, yes, because you need to have a certain means to be able to go out and travel. But it doesn't have to be over long distances. I think one of the things to keep in mind is that travel is an experiential type of thing. So you can go to someplace locally and look at it with fresh eyes and explore freedom in a nuance that you may not have had before. Mm -hmm. well, well, deep words of wisdom. Yeah, from, very well uh, said from the very expert. Very much like a travel mentor. <laughs> well, why don't we take a look and find out today how our subject found her own genuine freedom. As a child, my dream was to be a ballerina. My whole life has been like a beautiful stage for dancing and music. Mi nombre es Azaria, Azaria Lim, y yo soy cubana. Eh, vine a Corea a estudiar y quería visitar eh, esta ciudad de John, principalmente porque mi bisabuelo está enterrado aquí. Mm, eh, actualmente estoy estudiando en la Hamnam University y quiero hacer, eh, estudiar la carrera Global Communication Culture. Me gusta mucho Corea y tengo muchos amigos aquí y espero que los cuatro años que pase aquí sean los mejores y pueda aprender coreano y todo sea salga bien. My life in Korea inspired me to dream of new things. I live in the city of Daejeon, which is located 160 kilometers south of Seoul. It has a population of 1.5 million people, and it's the hub of science in Korea. I major in global communications. My classes are always full of energy. Well, our culture is there are many reasons behind we don't know it. So I gave you the stupid example of when you choose a boyfriend, uh, you have a girlfriend. Your girlfriend dumps you. I'll do the other way. You have a boyfriend, your boyfriend dumps you. A uh, theory about behaviorism, which is about that he says that people are shaped by society and their environment. And I think like the best example is that when kids are they're very little, they they just imitate them. And we should protect ourselves, yes or no. This is natural. Most of them I already know them from last semester, so, and I'm really happy. It's like when you know someone and you, you come into class and you feel rap happy to see your friends there. So we sit together and and just spend time like that. Um, many stories about her in these days and after um, being uh, her roommate, I can get to know her very 
deeply and I think she's a very kind girl. Studying in Korea wouldn't have been possible with my own efforts alone. Please. My professor helped me immensely with my studies in Korea. You did a really good job, I mm. saw. That's what I wanted to join the club. Right now you are missing your family, right? Mm, well, <laughs> I, may, I miss them, but I, I like to be here. That's mm. why I, I, I like to be here. That's why mm, yeah. not that much. Mm. <laughs> it's been almost a year since I lived away from my family in Cuba. My dream in Cuba was to become an artist. But a lot has changed since I came to Korea. I went to school and 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 went to 근데 일단 약속을 했잖아요. 근데 그쪽에서 있는 아자리 아버지는 아, 하, 딸을 한국에 보내는 걸로 지금 굳게 믿고 있는데 저는 뭐 그걸 잘 모르고 일단 알아보겠다고 최선을 다하겠다고 왔으니까 약속은 지켜야 되지 않겠어요. 그래서 하여튼 뭐 우리 학교에서는 입학하고 지금 주니까 이렇게 어렵게 어렵게 또뭐 한국에서도 뭐 외교부나 뭐 이제 이런 데서 어, 도움을 줘 가지고 이제 비자를 받고 학교에 왔죠. My great-grandfather received a medal from the Korean government in 1997 for his national independence activities. In 2004, he was buried in his home country that he has always longed to return to. Thanks to him, I was able to come to Korea and nurture a new dream. On the weekend, I decided to visit the downtown area. Daejeon was the host of an international science expo in 1993. Many places in this city proudly showcase the latest technologies, which you can also try firsthand. Space Exploratorium features a life-size model of Korea's first space rocket, NARA, which was successfully launched in January 2013. You can also get on a maglev train, an eco-friendly mode of transportation for the future. The train runs 8.8 .8 meters above the ground. Korea was the world's third to develop this technology. The guide explains the principles of the maglev train to the passengers. It's a wonder how this floating train works. This place puts on display Korea's scientific technologies and offers all kinds of hands-on programs. A bike running on a circular rail is sure to steal everyone's attention. And in this room, you can learn about the rotational effect of Earth. It's an amusement ride based on scientific principles. In addition to the latest technologies, you can also learn about natural history and ecology. Some of the exhibits demonstrate the evolution of Earth and its living organisms. Many of the great inventions on view here serve as historic evidence. 
This device was developed in the 18th century in order to build a fortress. It can lift objects as heavy as 15,000 kilograms. Today, I witnessed Korea's technological advancement in one glance. Now, I'm back at where I work part-time. I work 14 hours a week at this cafe. Where it's, it's more about socializing than actually working. And I, I really like it because I get the time to talk to, with students who don't live in the dorm or professors or even other stu or students from other universities or new people that sometimes come to this place and we just relax, maybe watch movies and drink coffee, it's not hard work. <laughs> Perhaps what matters in life is not the speed but the direction. Your life is pulled and shifted by the people you meet and what you see. I cannot say for certain what impact my time in Korea will have on my future. What matters is the here and the now. My future will be determined by whether I do my best at this moment or not. How was your day? It was really tired. Where did you go? Hmm? Did you attend the class? Yeah, I have three classes today. With and this class. And then work, it was working as well. Mm. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> So you got a class till, till five, uh, almost six, and then I want to go. Okay. So did you go to dinner or? Mm. Yeah, kind of these days. Well, <laughs> I think I have been in now. <laughs> I have two roommates at my dormitory. I'm a freshman, while my roommates are a sophomore and a senior. We all get along well. So who is this? Me! Who are you? I think I'm ready to tell them a bit more about myself. <laughs> They don't know that I wanted to become a ballerina before I came to Korea. Yeah. That age? Oh, I see. <laughs> That's the ballet. <laughs> That's really bad. Really bad. <laughs> Fathers, like, I think you only got like eyes and eyebrows mm. from your mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think so too. I mean, it's every so time I go out with friends, mm -hmm. like, you know, eating and sharing, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's girl thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, studying is really cool, but, but it's <laughs> going really out with friends and relaxes, you know. <laughs> Seeing the photos of my family made me homesick. My family always wanted to come to Korea. Thanks to my great-grandfather, we never forgot Korea. And now for me, Korea has become a very special place. Well, Azaria made a new dream in Korea being the first Cuban student to ever study in Korea. That is mm -hmm. very fascinating. Now, she has a special connection to Korea, isn't that right? That's right. And her great-grandfather, uh, Mr. Ernesto Lim, Im Chan Tae, made great contributions to Korea's independence movement, even while living in a foreign country, which is very impressive. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, you look at the whole independence movement here in Korea, and to be able to do that from so far away is just amazing. Right, there's a huge physical distance between Korea and Cuba. Right, and all those who contribute to such a worthy movement definitely deserve praise. Now, Daejeon, the city where uh, Zarya is staying, is considered to be the kind of the scientific capital of Korea, and there looks like there's a lot of 
really cool technology, like that train that runs uh -huh. on magnets. That was I, impressive. You know what? I visited Taejun Expo in 1993, and I still vividly remember the rides that I got on, and also I experienced for the first time the 4D movie theaters, and I was so excited. <laughs> my, my chairs vibrated, it bumped, and oh uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. But uh, from the video that we saw, it still looks like they have all these latest technologies, like maglev train and aerospace technologies. Yeah, I want to ride that bicycle that goes that upside down. Amazing. It looked kind of scary, but kind of funny too. Yeah. And what, what did you think of the Tejan, city of Tejan? Tejan is just an amazing city. I have a friend who actually works in the aerospace and space field. Oh. And he calls Daejeon the geek city. So if you're coming to Korea and you love technology, if you love science, he says, this is the place where you have to go. Mm -hmm. And what I actually like about it, and you saw that, that she was working in a cafe, is they also have a lot of cafes there. And some of the best coffee and snacks I've ever had in Korea were actually in Daejeon. So you get your science and you get your coffee and snacks at the same time. Wow. And it's a fairly big city, right? 1.5 million people. So mm -hmm. not quite the, when you want to maybe get away from the hospital and bustle of Seoul, but still have a nice city with all this technology, it could be the perfect place to go. And the city of Daejeon is located right in the center of the country, so it's easy to get to and from. Yeah, most trains actually have a, a, a route that goes through Daejeon, so it's also great if you want to stop off on your route throughout Korea and hey, take a few hours. Yeah, right. we'll definitely put Daejeon on your list of places to go in Korea. And right now, Azaria is in the homeland of her great-grandfather, pursuing a new dream, so let's follow along with her now. This museum shows how my ancestors left for Cuba. Their primary destination was Mexico. Back then, Korea was occupied by Japan, so many Koreans decided to move to the other side of the globe in search of freedom and new hope. When some 280 Koreans arrived in Cuba, what awaited them there was nightmarish ordeal, the Hennequin Farms. The Hennequin is a tough plant used to make ropes for ships. Koreans were forced to cut and transport thousands of Hennequins every day. It's amazing. I've seen these pictures before and I know a little bit about the history of my, of my great-grandfather and my family, but um, I, do, I, I, I do feel like really touched that uh, my, my, <laughs> my family's history is in, in this museum. My great-grandfather came to Cuba at the age of 18, but he never forgot his home country. His journals from then are now kept at a museum in Korea. Hangul이나 국어 교육을 아주 강조했던 사람이 임천택 선생이고 그리고 특이하게도 1930년대에 한국 본국하고 연락을 해 가지고 한글 관련 신문이나 잡지나 서적을 쿠바 지역으로 수입해 가지고 그때 당시에 쿠바에 있는 한국 사람들에게 한국어 교육을 시킨 유명한 사람이 임천택 선생이 되겠습니다. My great grandfather built a school for Koreans in Cuba so that second generation Koreans would not forget their ethnic roots. 
This letter was sent by my great grandfather to Korea more than 80 years ago. Although living in Cuba, he never lost touch with Korea. He sent letters asking for magazines so that he could stay updated on what was happening in Korea. Today, I got a chance to learn more about my great-grandfather. <laughs> this memorial hall is dedicated to a national independence fighter. The interim government led by Kim Gu was based in Shanghai, China. Koreans from all over the world sent their money to support the independence movement. Azaria, the Harabojiga, the Satangsu Nodongaroso, Ilbul Ibul Moon, Ker Tony, Ibun Hante Chenejagajigo, Urinara Tongi Be, Potemi Tesilke. Kim Gu's memoirs also contain records of my great grandfather. Then, as you know, and in, I've, I heard stories of my family, my grandfather told me, and they all said that not only him, but other people living in my country, in Cuba, were, who were uh, originally from Korea, they, I mean, they left Korea really young, and they they did feel they 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 felt that they they belonged to Korea and they wanted to help with the independence. They felt really bad that, that for all the people they knew what they were going through. So that's why they sent money and the help they could. Thanks to the sacrifices and efforts of many people. Korea finally achieved liberation. And thanks to my great-grandfather's contributions, I was able to come to Korea. I am thankful that I was able to better understand my great-grandfather's life. I've been invited to dinner, and the food reminds me of home. I feel in, in this, I, I really like this restaurant because it's part, I mean, Latin culture is, is real, is very similar, and although it's not the same, I feel a little bit like at home, and I, I really like Tango, where we're gonna, the show we're gonna see now, and that's, I, I think that, and I, I could speak Spanish with, with the, with the, those guys, so I, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for your help and support. Thank you for
I think my trip to Seoul has brought me much closer to my great-grandfather. I'm going to meet him today for the first time in a while. Resting in peace here are those who sacrifice their lives to save their nation. My great-grandfather's last wish was to be buried in his home country. His wish finally came true 20 years after his death. Chuncho Haraputi, aunque nunca tuve la oportunidad de hablar contigo y compartir momentos familiares, he podido conocerte desde que vivo en Corea, tu amada Corea. Ojalá pudieses ver lo mucho que tu familia te extraña y te recuerda. De la misma forma lo hace el pueblo coreano, agradecido de los sacrificios que tú, como otros coreanos que emigraron, hicieron por la patria. Hay muchas maneras de honrar la tierra donde uno nace, pero la más noble de todas es llevarla en el corazón y mostrarla, enseñarla a las generaciones futuras. Gracias por todo lo que hiciste por tu familia y por tu país. Te quiero mucho, Lazaria. There are many historic relics related to the independence movement near the National Cemetery. The Independence Hall of Korea was built on funds raised by the public. On display here are various visual resources that illustrate the lives and achievements of independence activists. The facility also provides interpretation services in English, Japanese, and Chinese for its foreign visitors. I was impressed to see the memorial hall of a female activist who is often compared to Joan of Arc. At the tender age of 18, Yu Guan Sun led the man's movement for the liberation of her country. She continued her fight for independence even in prison, right up to her death. Especially because she was a woman and she was a patriot. And I, I know she lost all of her family and she suffered a lot. But she did it she did it for a major cause because she wanted she believed in the independence of she wanted to see her nation free, as many other people did. And she couldn't she couldn't she died at I think she died at the prison and and she couldn't see her nation free from the Japanese and that's really sad. But I think this museum is kind of like tribute to her, well, to what she did for, for this nation, and Korean people feel very proud of that. Teaching the future generations about Korea's history, as my great-grandfather did, is the reason I was invited to Korea. And it's a way for me to repay my great-grandfather for his sacrifice. Well, it's definitely heartbreaking and troubling to see what a lot of the Koreans had to go through being forced to go to another country and work there. Very sad. That's right. But despite of all their difficulties, they still provided their financial and emotional support to Korea, hoping that their home country would achieve freedom um, after you know, the hard times. So I want to actually take this chance to say thank you to those who have sacrificed themselves for Korea's freedom today. What did you think of the video? 
Uh, it was really just incredible to watch. I can't imagine the flood of emotions that she must have felt going to the National Cemetery, to the burial plot where her great-grandfather was. Mm -hmm. I have a grandfather who's buried at Arlington National Cemetery in the United States. I remember going there for the very first time and being overcome with the sense of connectedness after not being able to see him for so long. And then also recently going to the Philippines where my uncle was a survivor of the Bataan Death March and being able to be in a place where they sacrificed so much really brought home the struggles of so many. Right, well, thanks to the sacrifices of all those people, Korea was eventually able to achieve independence and this was Azaria's great-grandfather's greatest wish. That's right. And also, it was really impressive to see how um, Azaria's grandfather, uh, great-grandfather, he sent all the money that he earned from Cuba all the way to the temporary government in China back then. And also, um, Azaria learning more about Yu Guansun. She was only 18 years old when she was partaking in the uh, Korea independence movement. So all of this uh, was quite amazing. Well, yeah, and I think it also serves as a great inspiration to those today because you may have lost hope and you may have no vision for the future, but here's someone who was enduring just incredible hardships and at 18 mm -hmm. to risk so much for Korea's future is just inspiring. Absolutely. Well, Azaria traveled from Daejeon to Seoul to explore the independence movement and the actions and efforts of her great-grandfather, now let's check in for today's travel tips. Azaria's great-grandfather left for Mexico from Incheon port. As Korea's first port, Incheon is home to many cultural relics. On today's travel tips, we're going to find out more about Incheon, which was the port of departure for many Korean immigrants and where the past coexists with the present. About a century ago, Incheon port bustled with merchants and ships from China, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. These days, there are all kinds of tours available at the port, from beautiful sunset tours to Korea's first lighthouse tours. This time, we are heading to Chinatown, a famous attraction in Incheon. It was set up 120 years ago by Chinese merchants. You can see here traditional Chinese streets and murals and try all kinds of delicacies. The most popular among them is jajangmyeon. It's made with pork, vegetables, and noodles mixed with black bean sauce. Savory and addictive, it's a must try for anyone who visits. Last but not least is a culture and art center called Incheon Art Platform. It's a complex of renovated buildings that were constructed in the 1930s. Now this facility features studios, exhibition halls, and performance halls. It has emerged as a new attraction of Incheon, especially after Korean TV shows were filmed there. First-generation Korean immigrants left Korea from Incheon port, which is now a large cultural center. Now let's go back to Azaria to find out more about her journey. Today, I've come to Seoul with a friend of mine. Our first stop is Bukjeon. It's a village within a metropolis, home to some 12,000 traditional style houses called Hano. The Seoul city government has selected eight spots in the neighborhood that attest the beauty of traditional hanok and alleys. They're called Bukchon Paegyeong. You can apply for Bukchon tours provided in English by making reservations in advance. The eight most scenic spots in Bukchon include traditional stone fences, roof tiles, and the view of the village beyond. 
You can also see how Koreans lived many centuries ago. Uh, why you are here? Guess what? What? Just for this position. But? Oh. Yes? Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> Did the laundry. <laughs> Did the laundry. It's, uh, because it's, uh, when the uh, Joseon dynasty, court ready. What used to be a part of Koreans' everyday life has now become the symbol of luck to tourists. For example, this place is thought to bring good luck if you wash your hands here three times. You can easily spot photo zones in Bukchon. They point out scenic spots that tourists might pass by. This guest house offers lodging as well as traditional hands-on programs. Its structure has remained unchanged since the past. You can try three kinds of programs with the help of the multi-talented owner. One of them is the traditional tea-making ceremony. You can also try on the Korean traditional dress called hanbok. I tried it on once when I was in Cuba, but it feels different when you wear it inside a hanok. This time, I decided to do something a little more engaging. Here, you can try your hand at making a Korean traditional knot. For many centuries, this handicraft used to be an indispensable part of Koreans' everyday lives. There are 38 kinds of traditional knots, characterized by fine colors and designs. They were used both as a daily item and decoration. My friend and I decided to make our own knots. A traditional knot is perfectly symmetrical and balanced. You have to use both hands and follow the steps in order to get the right shape. I can't help thinking that the way these delicate threads from a tight knot is very much like our lives. This is kind of symbol of Some our friendship. Right. Thank you. I like it. I love it. Give me my present. <laughs> I, I feel like I have a special tie with, with this country because I have some Korean blood inside of me because my great-grandfather was Korean and I like this place so much. So, yes, I think I, I do have a tie with Korea, with the place I live, my university, and my friends. So, this also, for me, represents that. On the first night of my trip, I decided to go see the night view of the Han River, Seoul's iconic landscape. A city that has gone through much pain but it overcame all the challenges to rise as a globally recognized cultural hub. The reason of this trip was to get to know about my roots and why am I here, thanks to him. He always wanted to come to Korea. Uh, he only could do that after, after death. And I'm happy that finally his dream came true and instead of him maybe and other 
people in my family that would like to come to Korea to visit or, I don't know, to live here or study. I'm, I'm here and I feel really happy. On day two, I visited the Hongik University area where diverse forms of youth culture drive the neighborhood. It's famous for fashion, good food, and live music. The weekly free market is the signature attraction of this area. It's an opportunity to see and buy the works of many up-and-coming artists. This art market doesn't only sell merchandise, but also serves as a venue for communication between artists and the public. It also holds all kinds of events and performances. Designed by artists and run by artists, the market is down to earth and vibrant. I even forgot about my friend while choosing something to buy. There were so many things that caught my eye. Seoul is an interesting place indeed. Traditions and modernity are juxtaposed side by side with neither losing its light. This is a famous fusion restaurant. It serves traditional Korean food combined with the ingredients that modern day customers like. Are we eating again? <laughs> oh. Well, we aren't eating if only we were. That looks scrumptious. Yeah, oh. it's like a fusion cuisine. Oh yeah, it seems. yeah. Is that mushroom? Mushroom and... Very artistic. Is that garlic? Oh. A garlic, uh, garlic on top? That's it's kimchi, like a kimchi it's something, variation. yeah. Yeah. It's all kind of it's a fusion. Lovely. Oh, it's so nicely set. Yeah, the presentation's phenomenal. And that pork, that's the <laughs> thing I'd be most interested in. <laughs> Garlic. Oh, almost, like a, almost like a roasted samgyeopsal piece. Yeah. Busam, busam. Mm. Is it really busam? I've never seen busam kind of. kind of. that dark before. I like authentic Korean cuisine. Samgyeopsal, bulgogi, tteokbokki, kimbap, you name it. Korean food is not only delicious, but also healthy. Although I try to avoid food that's too spicy. Not really spicy, but there are some sp spices that, that, that makes it so, so cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. The Hongik University area exudes passion and vigor. You can see and try so much here. When dusk falls, music bands set up their instruments right in the streets. This cafe also holds concerts. It's small and cozy, but its customers are hardcore music fans. During the day, there's coffee and music, and in the evenings, drinks and live gigs. 
Now I understand why the Hongik University area is called the cradle of young pop music in Korea. I like Ailey and I like Roy Kim. And I also like Sai, like, you know, like for music for dancing. I think K-pop is more about the show, like the, the funny things or dramatic things maybe and Cuban music is less about that. We, we are, we're more famous uh, from about salsa and reggae and other kind of genres. Um, K-pop is more, I mean, it's more like dancing pop music, like for clubbing and stuff like that, I think so. My trip started with my great-grandfather and my family in Cuba, but it ended with me, a 20-year-old young woman. I want to continue to explore Korea, its culture and people, in order to discover my true self. Well, Zarya certainly looked like she enjoyed her journey through Seoul, particularly Hongdae, mm -hmm. which young college students really love for its liveliness and especially on Fridays which they sometimes call in Korea as you know Bulgum Burning right. Friday. Burning Friday. Yeah and Hongdae is a hot spot for people to go and shake off the stress of the work week and enjoy themselves. That's right. And I used to go to Hongik University area very often because I was doing this fashion uh, fashion show, fashion program. And Hongdae is very famous for creating this fashion trends. Not only fashion, but also there are lots of street musicians, mm -hmm. um, indie band, you know, concerts, and lots of cafes. Uh, have you... I mean, you probably have been to Hongdae, right? Oh, several <laughs> times. But I'm a little bit more advanced in years, so I typically don't go for the nightlife, but I do go for some of the great food, and yes. especially like we saw in the video, the great uh, weekend uh -huh. markets over in the playground area. Fantastic. And they have some of the most amazing cafes in Seoul. That's right. And also, especially the, uh, around the Hongik University area, there are Sangsu Station and Hapjong Station. Those are the new, hip, sort of rising streets, I heard. Is that so? Well, also, they're calling Hongdae the new Harajuku, oh. also, as I've heard. Mm. The, the fashion trends that were being set in Harajuku, that famous area in Tokyo, is now kind of the focus is shifting to Hongdae in its own unique fashions. And for more traditional things, we looked at Bukchon, which they also visited. Right. Those houses are two to three hundred years old, and they're still being preserved inside of Seoul. It's a really cool look to see the modern and the old kind of side by side in harmony. That's right, and I love this Bukchon area because that's where the old and the new meet, and also the entire area of that uh, sub northern part of Seoul. Um, there is Samcheongdong, there's Gyeongbokgung, there's Buamdong. Uh, it is one of my favorite places to go to. Do you like this area? Uh, absolutely. In fact, I always take my friends who come to Korea for the very first time up to Bukchon to walk through mm -hmm. the streets because it's something you don't see a lot of anymore because of how modern Seoul has become over the last 60, 70 years. So you have, like you said, the juxtaposition of traditional houses, the hanoks there, and then the steep alleyways, but the beautiful tiled roofs and in the distance you see the modern architecture it's just phenomenal any time of year that's right and i think this is uh Bukchon probably is the best place to um take some of the most touristic pictures of korea and also uh, around that area there's the namsan mountain so n tower there's so much to see really absolutely there's so much to see in seoul and all over korea <laughs> and today we were able to follow along with azaria as she reconnected with the roots of her great grandfather learned about the Korean independence movement and explored Korea. <laughs> That's right. Before we wrap up, uh, Steve, do you happen to have any words of suggestions to uh, our travelers in Korea? Well, I would just say that go out and explore and have an open mind. Be open to the possibility and you will <laughs> never be disappointed. That's right. I love, I, I, I feel this sense of freedom from you too. Freedom and optimism. <laughs> yes. yes. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions or comments about our show, please visit our webpage on Arirang TV's website. And if you're searching for your own personal freedom, then travel through Korea, you won't regret it. Thank you for joining us on Travel Story. See you next time. Bye. Bye.